Crypto Caesar, Caesar Capital, hope you're well. It's the 26th of uh, September, 2024. Um, firstly, uh, this uh, episode is brought to you by Primex BT, um, a cryptocurrency trading exchange, which I'm sure you heard of. If you are a uh, trader who is interested in leveraged trading, either crypto, equities, commodities, uh, then check out the link in the description. This is a pretty good deposit bonus. All you have to do is click on the link, uh, select 20% uh, deposit bonus, uh, sign up a new account, make the deposit, and you will get 20% on your deposit up to 7,000 uh, USDT. So pretty good deal. Um, and thanks to them for allowing this episode uh, to come uh, to the public. Okay, so what we're going to look at today is um, the altcoin market because um, a lot of people for a long time have been calling an alt season and they were completely wrong. And I, as you probably know, have been saying that we are not going to have an altcoin season until Bitcoin dominance is around the 58 to 60 percent uh, level. Now, to 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 to, to understand the altcoin seasons. This one metric, this one chart is something that you really, really need to deeply understand because this will help you so much. OK, and there is a because there is a direct correlation uh, between Bitcoin dominance um, and uh, altcoin seasons. The long and short of it is this, is that Bitcoin dominance has to be pretty high uh, before um, the altcoin season uh, begins, and as the altcoin season begins, it will then uh, start uh, to uh, drop. Uh, and uh, the reason why um, we have uh, Bitcoin dominance, uh, and you need to understand it, is because um, without using this metric, you're just going to get chopped up, and you're not going to understand uh, how uh, the altcoin market works. Now, uh, Bitcoin dominance is, as I say, really quite important. And as you can see uh, in this chart, um, you can see, and I've mapped them out for you, the beginning really of each uh, altcoin cycle. Now, when I say altcoin cycle, I mean when altcoins start to generally outperform uh, Bitcoin. Um, some of them might not, of course. Some of them might just be zombies and not really do much at all or just go flat or go up a little bit. But some of them will significantly outperform Bitcoin. Uh, now, that's another video, picking the right ones. Uh, but generally speaking, once uh, Bitcoin dominance starts to drop, uh, the altcoins then start to outperform Bitcoin. Uh, so now um, I've mapped out the, the beginning of each alt season and essentially the end of each alt season so you can see them. So the first one, the first alt season kind of started to happen in around the sort of January, December, January uh, of uh, 2017. And as you can see, at the point of which it started, Bitcoin dominance was extremely high okay so this is the market cap essentially the market cap of bitcoin versus the rest of the market so at that point the the dominance of bitcoin's market cap was 97 percent over the rest of the market so the rest of the market was tiny and was priced very very small okay and that's why uh, there was this huge alt season uh back in 2017 and as you can see it started in sort of the Q1 of uh, 2017, Bitcoin dominance was at 96 or 97 percent, and then it fell off a cliff. OK, and it came all the way down uh, to 36 percent. So it went from 97 percent or so all the way down to 36 percent. Uh, and it was this uh, point, this area here where Bitcoin dominance dropped uh, that um, the altcoins really started to rally uh, and really started to outperform Bitcoin. I mean, that alt season is probably a little bit of an outlier because some of the returns on some of the altcoins back in 2017 was just astronomical. It was unbelievable. Some of them went up a million percent, uh, some 750,000, some 500,000, 100,000 percent, etc. cetera. Uh, all you have to do is look at the chart of NEO, which used to be called uh, AntShares, 
or look at Redcoin or look at um, XRP, things like that, and you will see uh, what happened in 2017. Now, I'm not suggesting that that is going to happen uh, this time round, uh, but it's important to note uh, that Bitcoin dominance uh, is very high before the alt season begins. Uh, and there's quite there's a, there's a reason why Bitcoin dominance is quite high. It's because um, at that point, um, just before, uh, there is no risk on environment on other altcoins. Um, essentially, most people are um, safely sitting in Bitcoin and not really interested in putting their money into uh, other risky plays. Uh, but as Bitcoin dominance drops and lose its dominant, loses its dominance over the market, that's when there becomes um, the mania phase in the cycle, the, or you may call it the risk on phase, whatever you want to call it. But that's when investors become uh, or are willing to take higher risk within the market. OK, when Bitcoin dominance is uh, super high, just before Bitcoin dominance is super high, uh, the investors are sort of on the edge of, of um, you know, plowing money into altcoins. Uh, but essentially, Bitcoin dominance needs to be very high before that risk on environment uh, begins. So we had the first alt season, which was in 2017. Uh, you know, it, it sort of began the latter part of 2016, but really started to, to move it sort of in, you know, Q1 of 2017. Uh, then it came down and topped out. Um, uh, at 36% or bottomed out at 36%. And that was the euphoric top of 2017. So December 2017 into January of 2018. Of course, uh, Bitcoin topped out in December of 2017 and the alts ran for another three weeks or so beyond that. And um, the euphoric top was in January of 2018. So it went all the way from 97% all the way down uh, to 37%. Uh, percent. Uh, then uh, Bitcoin dominance, uh, you know, we, we were in a bear market at that point. Bitcoin dominance then uh, continued its uh, trajectory to the upside like it should do, because, of course, you know, people are getting now absolutely wrecked in altcoins, holding these shit coins that they held uh, through this euphoric top, but still holding them, thinking they were going to continue to go up. They were, of course, wrong. And they, of course, lost most of their value whilst this, uh, whilst Bitcoin dominance gained its dominance over the market. Then we had uh, the uh, beginning of the, the last alt season, which was um, in December 2020, going into uh, January 21. Uh, and at that point, um, Bitcoin dominance was at, it was at about 70%. I mean, if we put it on, uh, a candle chart it's probably a little bit higher so yeah i mean on the candle chart it's 73.76 so rounded off 74 percent. so it's still pretty high right uh but then uh, of course um bitcoin uh was able to capture its previous all-time high of 20k started pushing beyond that risk on in the market everyone got fomo everybody's willing to take more risk what happens bitcoin dominance drops uh, out of the sky, down the cliff uh, it goes, uh, and um, it arguably uh, it, it topped out really um, at about thirty nine percent or so uh, in uh, sort of April May of twenty one. Arguably that was the top for most altcoins, although the Bitcoin top uh, came in later in November twenty twenty. Uh, uh, sorry, yeah, the, so the top for Bitcoin came in later on, uh, however, um, the uh, in 21, sorry, so um, yeah, that should be there, shouldn't it? That's wrong. Apologies. Uh, but yeah, so the Bitcoin top were in, uh, was, yeah, November 2021, uh, so around about here. Um, Bitcoin dominance uh, topped out, uh, and that was the end of that. But but the point is this: that arguably most altcoins in sort of April, May, twenty one, uh, and that's it. They had their day. They then dropped with Bitcoin dropping that fifty percent uh, during the summer, and they didn't really regain after that. Although some of them, like Solana, etc., um, Ethereum did, but ninety percent of them didn't, um, or at least the lion's share of them didn't. 
but the point again being uh, all the uh, Bitcoin dominance was super high uh, in uh, December 20, and then it dropped off that cliff, going from essentially 74% uh, down to uh, 39%. Then we, ha we had our bear market, which uh, ensued, um, uh, and um, here we are now um, at about 57.56%. Uh, I think this area where we have this area here of um, support, support is now going to be likely become uh, resistance. Okay, so we've got this area of support here, 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 and here. So this area that I've mapped out here on a linear basis um, is going to be probably where uh, there is huge resistance. And I suspect uh, that Bitcoin dominance uh, will top out here if it has, hasn't already topped out. I think, you know, realistically speaking, there's probably going to be a little bit more upside to it once Bitcoin starts pushing through its all time high. Uh, but you know, between 58 and 60%, I think is going to be the top, and then it will start to make its trajectory uh, to the downside. And that is when the altcoins will begin uh, to outperform uh, Bitcoin. Now, what's quite interesting, actually, as well, is uh, that if you look at uh, the four year cycle, you know, I've done many videos uh, on this, my last video, I, I touched on it. Um, when we measure the cycle lows, so these are this is the four-year cycle. Now, this has got nothing to do uh, with uh, the halving. Uh, this is simply um, a cycles chart based on the lows. And when you're a cycles trader, you, you're more interested in lows than highs because the low essentially um, indicates to you the end of one cycle and the beginning of a new cycle. So you can see we've got the four cycles here of Bitcoin. We're in the fourth cycle now. Uh, and you can see each um, from each low uh, to the next low um, is four years uh, or thereabouts within a few weeks. Um, so each of those is four years. So we we measure from low to low. And interestingly enough, um, when you look at the midpoint um, of the four year cycle, the first interesting thing which I uh, mentioned to you uh, in my last video and a few videos uh, before that on numerous occasions is that when we get to the midpoint of the cycle, so the midpoint, of course, is the halfway point between one low and the next low. When we get to the midpoint of the four year cycle, Bitcoin uh, is always or always has historically been uh, attacking its uh, previous all-time high. You can see here in the first cycle, second cycle, midpoint, attacking its previous all-time high. Uh, third cycle, midpoint, attacking its previous all-time high. So that's, that's quite interesting. So let's look at that and the correlation, as it were, to the midpoint of a cycle, uh, of a four-year cycle, and its correlation to Bitcoin dominance, because there is actually quite a large correlation. Uh, this uh, midpoint is going to be around about the 18th of November, but this, you know, th th there's nothing exact about this. I expect to be it to be in the latter part of Q4. I think we need to give it a wide berth. But looking at Bitcoin dominance um, and uh, where uh, midpoints are, so this was uh, the peak of the last. Uh, uh, of Bitcoin dominance in its previous cycle when it went to about 74%. That was on uh, the 28th of uh, December um, 2020. Uh, so that was its peak um, here. Again, similarly, not quite its peak, but you could see as you know, Bitcoin is starting to fall off the cliff. Um, we're around about sort of, you know, the end of February or thereabouts. Um, if we put in the midpoint uh, here, about there, we go back to our midpoints in uh, the cycles, you will see uh, that the midpoint um, in 2016 was um, the end of December, beginning of January, so December 16 to January 17, and the mid, uh, so it started falling off the cliff where February 2017, so extremely close to the midpoint. Uh, the next midpoint uh, was 26th of December, uh, sorry, the next midpoint was the 14th of December 2020. 
when we start falling off a cliff, 4th of January, uh, well, actually it was the 28th of December 2020 when Bitcoin dominance then started to fail and move uh, to the downside. So there's a correlation, isn't there, really, between the midpoint uh, and the, 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 the topping or the the, the the failure, as it were, of Bitcoin dominance. When Bitcoin dominance starts to peak out and fail and move to the downside, where are we in the Bitcoin cycle? Well, uh, it seems that we are, uh, on each occasion previously, at the midpoint. Now, that makes absolute sense, does it not? Because right at the beginning of this video, um, I was discussing with you um, the... Um, the confidence, as it were, in the market when Bitcoin dominance is very high and then starts to fall off a cliff. Bitcoin dominance starts to fall off a cliff at the midpoint uh, uh, of uh, each previous cycle. And it's at that point when Bitcoin dominant, when Bitcoin is pushing up and beyond its all time high, that's when the risk on environment begins. And that's when investors become um, more comfortable uh, with taking uh, more uh, risk. Uh, so there is a huge correlation here uh, between midpoints and the uh, Bitcoin dominance chart, because what this suggests is once we get to the midpoint, and once Bitcoin starts pushing through that all-time high, as it historically has done in the past, that's when investors like to take more risk, and that's when the altcoin market starts to outperform Bitcoin and that's when Bitcoin dominance drops because of course the altcoin market is gaining in its market cap versus uh, Bitcoin. So the next uh, midpoint um, is around about the 18th of November but we've got to give it a wide berth. We, you know anyone saying to you this is going to happen on this date is just a fool's errand really. It's, it's you know I never ever would um, approach investing or trading on that basis. What I'm, what, the way I would approach it is this, is that historically uh, Bitcoin has done this and Bitcoin dominance has done this. Bitcoin is a very cyclical asset. Um, and the chances are, uh, based on what has happened previously, is that Bitcoin dominance is going to top out around about the point or, uh, or around about the area of the midpoint. So I would personally uh, give it a wide berth, essentially the latter part of Q4. So all of November and December, really, I would give uh, that uh, the, the wide berth or the window. So to me, I my view based on uh, this analysis is that Bitcoin dominance is likely to top out at the latter end of Q4, and then it will start its trajectory to the downside and that is when altcoins are going to rip uh, and um, hopefully make you a significant amount of money. Now, uh, not only is um, Bitcoin dominance uh, a good indicator when looking at when alt seasons might begin, but it's also a good indicator as, as to when they might finish uh, because when we look at this chart, we can see that although Bitcoin dominance was extremely high on each occasion before it started its trajectory to the downside and then altcoins outperformed Bitcoin, but it came down uh, to, to, to quite sort of a low area. In 2018, it was um, around about 35% or so. In uh, 2021, it came down to about 39%. Uh, so what Bitcoin dominance is also able to help you with is when the market is becoming overextended and when the market has uh, taken on, excuse me, way too much risk uh, and it's had enough and it's going to turn uh, on the market participants, i.e. the top uh, is in. Now, we don't know where Bitcoin dominance is going to come to. What we've got to take into account now is that there are a lot more, there are a lot more altcoins uh, in the market. The uh, stablecoin market caps are much, 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 much bigger than they were last cycle and significantly uh, bigger than they were in the cycle previous. So we've got to take that into account. And that's partially why uh, you know, Bitcoin dominance probably topped out at 39% the last uh, cycle and 35% uh, in the cycle previous. 
Um, but for me, uh, once Bitcoin dominance gets anywhere close to this green box, um, I would start being cautious um, about the market. I mean, you could draw a trend line, I suppose, up here. I mean, it doesn't really mean a huge amount um, because, you know, it's it's just basically a diagonal line. Uh, but it's something that you can take into account because it said it's low here back in 18 and, it, and it's kind of respected this area here, respected, respected. So... Um, if Bitcoin follows uh, the four-year cycle, uh, then potentially uh, Bitcoin dominance is going to come down close uh, to uh, this um, trend line, which would be sort of in the low 40s, mid to low 40%. So when Bitcoin dominance gets close to uh, this trend line, uh, for me, I I will be looking. Uh, well, I went, I mean, I will start to be cautious uh, about the market and start taking uh, chips off the table, and at least start to set uh, stop losses. Uh, so trend line comes down, you know, depending on when it tops out, but it, it's around about the top of that box, around about forty two percent. So when Bitcoin dominance gets close to that sort of mid to low forty percent range. For me, of course, everybody's different, but for me, that would be certainly a uh, indicator that um, we could be, you know, coming close to a top uh, in the market. So that's it for today. Um, hopefully that will assist you um, in your altcoin investments, because I know a lot of people are a little bit scared at the moment. A lot of altcoins have essentially been beaten up uh, the last uh, quarter or this financial quarter of Q3, they did pretty well in Q1, Q2. Uh, but Q3 Bitcoin has basically remained stagnant, although it went from 74 down to um, 48, 50K. But, you know, it's respecting and holding uh, a monthly uh, range uh, of um, about 60K or so. So um, Bitcoin is stagnant. Altcoins, are get, is, they're, they're getting beaten up. You know, some altcoins are down 70, 80%. But... Don't let that put you off. Uh, certainly, I'm holding some altcoins at the moment, which are slightly underwater, but I don't have a problem with that because I have organized my portfolio. So I am mainly Bitcoin. I always say to, to, to people in my group and to investors that I speak to that your portfolio should always be at least 50% uh, Bitcoin. Mine is more than that, but I say that it should be at least 50% Bitcoin, 25% Ethereum, and then 25% altcoins uh, split over um, about 10 different altcoins. I've done a long video on that, so you can go back and have a look at that video. Um, but um, I wouldn't let uh, the situation at the moment put you off. Um, my view is that Bitcoin dominance is coming very, very close now to topping out. And my view is that it will likely top out in the latter end of Q4. And then the alt season will start in uh, Q1 through potentially Q2. Um, so have confidence in your investment. Don't worry about it too much. And if you are way too overexposed with altcoins this cycle, then learn something from that and remember the next cycle make sure you have a good position in Bitcoin because Bitcoin is your hedge really against all these shit coins. Okay, so it's really, really important uh, to have the majority of your position uh, in Bitcoin, especially if you are dealing with large amounts of capital. All right, that's the video for today. Don't forget about the offer. As I said, if you're a trader, you go long, you go short. Make sure you exercise risk management and check out this, um, the link in the description and go and get your 20% deposit bonus. All right. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye.